Hello friend, welcome to Marine Engineering Hub. This is your narrator Ravi Gupta. Today we want to talk about turbocharger failure. That how a turbocharger failure occur and what arrangement we can do if a turbocharger failure occur. Before beginning the video, I want to tell you that I have made a whole series regarding a turbocharger covering each and every topic in detail. I will give the link in the description box. Please watch. I request. Before beginning the video, it's a request to you, all of you, that please do subscribe and share our channel so that we can learn and grow together. So let's begin the today video of turbocharger failure. So as you know that a turbocharger basically is used to use the exhaust energy of the combustion for producing air that is required for a combustion purpose in a synopsis i can say like that so if a turbocharger failure occur if this turbocharger has failed because of the damage impeller or damaged turbine or rotor or bearing got damaged in that case what will happen the turbocharger will be out of operation which will create serious problem if this turbocharger is out of operation in that case it will create a serious problem so for that purpose in that case if you have a only single turbocharger you have to use auxiliary blower and you have to reduce the engine rpm at a half or at a slow depending upon the vibration depending upon the temperature depending upon the condition i mean to say so if you are have having multi stage turbocharger or you have two or three turbocharger running in sequential manner in that case if your one of the turbocharger has gone bad or giving problem in that case you can use the remaining two turbocharger and you can cut out this turbocharger and depending upon the ambient condition you have to adjust the rpm accordingly so the basic main aim which i mean to say is that you have to reduce means you can't operate the engine in the same optimum condition as it were before why because the amount of air that is required for combustion purpose will be reduced because the turbocharger is not working effectively so it cannot produce that amount of air for that reason what we are going to do so let's see turbocharger failure has serious implication particularly if engine has only one turbocharger severe vibration due to impeller or turbine blade damage bearing failure or fracture to the of the water cooling casing so what can happen this casing this water cooled casing can get fracture this impeller can get damaged this turbine blade can get damaged this bearing can go bad so these are all the condition which can lead to a turbocharger failure okay so what we will do so as i have told you it is advisable to reduce turbocharger rpm or disable turbocharger completely now if you are facing problem while operating the turbocharger in higher rpm but in lower rpm it is still working then it may be wise to operate the engine at that speed where it is not giving problem as long as we can use it because as long as you can use the turbocharger we are able to provide the engine with the optimum required amount of combustion because of the air that is needed for combustion purpose but if the conditions like vibration temperature of the bearing or the temperature of the inlet or outlet of the turbocharger is arising too much which is defying the normal operating condition in that case you should disably cut out the turbocharger so this is what it is written here now 
if you have taken the decision that okay my turbo charger has gone bad i have to disable it so what you will do disabling turbo charger assuming constant pressure system so we are assuming here that we are using a constant pressure turbo charger system because in most of the main engine of the ship constant pressure turbo charging is used why it is used if you want to know i have made a video in regarding that you can watch that so depending of, upon the facility available and design of the installation only one turbo charger blower side arrangement okay now we are seeing here that if you are provided with only one turbo charger let's see what we can so do in a blower side so what do i mean by blower side is this let's suppose your turbo charger has gone bad now what you can do in this in this side means how you can provide the air to the engine let's see so as you know auxiliary blower takes suction from engine room no action to be taken so if the auxiliary blower is taking suction directly from the engine room it means in that case you don't have to do anything okay if the suction arrangement is provided directly from the engine room then you no have you don't have to take any action but if auxiliary blower taking suction from the turbocharger compressor outlet then remove the compensator between the compressor outlet and the scavenger suction to reduce auxiliary blower suction resistance very very important so let me explain you in detail what is happening now here in this diagram you can see the auxiliary blower is taking suction from here you can see from the compressor outlet okay so basically so what is happening as here suction is taking from the compressor outlet so what they are saying they are saying that you have to reduce the minimum resistance here means if we can remove the compensator in that case means as you know that here if it is taking suction from this compressor outlet so if we can reduce the resistance here by removing the compensator arrangement in that case there will be effectively air provided to the compressor by the auxiliary blower so if your auxiliary blower is taking suction from the engine room means suppose if it is taking directly suction from here means from outside the engine room is taking suction and directly giving to the engine it's not using this it's not using this part it is taking suction from here and directly giving to the engine okay in that case what will happen in that case you don't have to do any arrangement here okay you, your air is coming from here and is directly going to here so you don't have to do anything from here but if it's taking suction from here and then it is providing to the auxiliary blower then in that case you have to reduce the any resistance any path which can be removed so that air can be effectively available in more amount to the auxiliary blower okay now let's see the other cases now if your turbocharger is provided with exhaust bypass arrangement in that case you can lock the turbocharger rotor and remove the blanking plate from the exhaust bypass pipe and fit the bypass pipe insert blanking plate to the turbine inlet or outlet to prevent flow of exhaust gas through the turbocharger so basically what they are saying as you can see in this diagram this diagram here this is a turbocharger so basically what is happening here a bypass arrangement is provided now if your turbocharger this turbocharger has gone bad suppose this turbocharger has gone bad so now what will happen you can do one thing that you can lock this turbocharger means you can just lock your turbocharger so that it does not rotate and after that you can start the auxiliary blower of the main engine and you can reduce the rpm and you can bypass that exhaust directly to the 
EZP for effectively use of the heat. Okay, now this is the one thing you can do if you are providing with the exhaust bypass. Now, if you are not provided with the exhaust bypass, in that case, you have to remove the rotor and nozzle ring from the turbocharger and insert a blanking plate to isolate the air side and bearing from the gas side of the turbocharger so direct passes away from the turbocharger inlet to out so now this is the very thing now suppose one arrangement i have shown you here that if there is bypass provided you can bypass it and you can just simply lock the thing now you are only provided with this turbine you have no EZP or exhaust bypass is provided then what you will gonna do so you can do one thing you can remove this complete router means this arrangement to be completely removed okay this should be completely removed and a blanking plate should be fitted here a blanking plate should be fitted here so that the exhaust coming from here can go directly to the hair without having any resistance and you have also to remove the nozzle ring so basically what we are doing if you are provided with one turbocharger we are reducing as much as resistance which can be provided by unnecessary rotation of the turbine or compression we are reducing the rotation so more amount of air can be provided to the turbocharger sorry auxiliary blower and more amount of exhaust gas can easily pass without having any resistance so this is what i have written here remove the rotor and nozzle ring from the turbocharger and insert blanking plate to isolate air side and bearing from the gas side so we are putting a blank, blanking plate here and also here also because our aim is to reduce the resistance so we are removing the turbine side turbine and this thing but in order to prevent contamination of the exhaust gas with the air we are providing a blanking plate here now we are also providing a blanking plate here because we in order to prevent contamination of exhaust with the lube oil of the self independent lubrication so for that reason you need two blanking plate one here and one here and you have to remove this hole totally and then you can use the turbocharger as a just bypass arrangement okay and you can also provide minimum resistance now engine with two or more turbocharger the rotor of the defective turbocharger may be locked or fist plate inserted in the compressor outlet and turbine inlet A small air flow provide compressor cooling A small gas flow through turbine prevent corrosion engine load restriction will apply auxiliary blower may be operated depending upon scavenger demand so now this diagram show you that these are consisting of three turbochargers. Now suppose one of the turbochargers has gone bad. So now what you will do? You can still run the engine, but you can't run it with the optimum maximum operating condition as you were doing earlier because your one of the turbochargers has gone bad. So you will reduce the RPM or you will reduce the operating condition. And after that, in order to ensure that this turbocharger doesn't get unwantedly overheated you will have to provide a cooling arrangement to the compressor side by a installing a orifice plate in the compression outlet and turbine inlet the orifice plate which is provided in the compressor outlet and turbine inlet both are having different purpose so where it will be installed it will be installed in the compressor outlet this is here and one will be installed at the turbine inlet one will be here so here and here basically it is installed why it is installed so that it can provide the cooling the necessary cooling of the compressor 
to prevent it from getting overheated and second in turbine inlet it is provided so that it can prevent the corrosion so both air which is been provided is having different motive okay so basically we are providing air flow for compressor cooling and gas flow to prevent corrosion as you know that the exhaust which is going out is having corrosive mixture so if it get accumulated if there is no gas flow it can start corrosive environment can develop and can start corrosion of turbine break to prevent that if you continue the small amount of gas flow in that case it will prevent it from happening okay now okay and depending upon the engine power if we need to start the oxygen blower we can we have to start it so this is how what we can do if a turbocharger failure occur i hope you have gained something from this video if you are watching till now i'm very thankful to you and please do subscribe and please do share with your friend if you like the video and please 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 share this video in a whatsapp WeChat, facebook instagram whatever platform you want please do share and please do subscribe thank you friend.